Hey, what's up everyone? We're back with another tutorial in Cubase Pro 11, perhaps one of the last because Cubase Pro 12 is coming soon. So be sure to get subscribed to hear my review of what's new in Cubase when it happens. But before that, I wanna say that it's no secret that guitarists love their pedal boards. I'm sure you've been to a show where there's three people in a dingy Tuesday night at a bar and the guitarist has $15,000 worth of pedals splayed across the stage. Now, I've played enough gigs where the guitarist pedal board has monkeyed up the works because there's something wrong with it. It, that I've always taken a minimalist approach to pedals, especially because I started on bass, but even when I migrated to guitar, I tried to keep my chain as simple as possible to avoid any technical difficulties. But now that I'm producing most of my music in the studio, there's nothing holding me back. And instead of using real pedals, which of course you have to commit to and they're locked in stone, I like to use pedals within virtual guitar processors like Guitar Rig, VST Amp Rack, and Amplitude. Now, if you're using Guitar Rig or VST Amp Rack, using a Stompbox feature is super easy, and I'm gonna show you how to do that today. And if you're using Amplitude, it is unnecessarily convoluted and confusing. Because from my experience, IK Multimedia has a very, very, very annoying software experience. That's just my personal opinion, but I will show you how to automate Stompbox type effects in Guitar Rig, VST Amp Rack, and Amplitude today. So let's get into it. Okay, folks, so we're here in Cubase, and what I'm talking about is I have this song here, and in this section, I stomp on a phaser, and it's on for this time. So if we open Guitar Rig, we can see that the phaser is off. When it reaches this line, it will turn on because I want a phaser for this section. So let's take a listen and watch this light right here. and then boom, it's off. Now that is very easy to do with Guitar Rig, and I'll show you how. I'll just uh, pull up this track and I'll delete it. I'll hit Shift Delete and it'll warn me that there's data in the track and I'll say yes. Now I will reopen Guitar Rig. I will go to my marker, the second marker, by hitting Shift 2, and that'll line up where I want to hit, and then I will hit this button when I want the phaser to come in. Uh, but I have to make sure that automation writing is enabled. So if I click that, we're good to go. Okay, so now I'll hit play and just stomp on the stomp box, the virtual stomp box when it's ready. So let's give it a shot. Okay, now if we look at show used automation by right clicking on the track and hitting show used automation selected tracks, we see that here we have it. And if we want to tweak just a little bit where it comes in, we can start pulling stuff around. So this is a ring, rung out chord and here's where the riff starts. So if we want the phaser to come in right when that riff starts, we can move this back to here. And let's give that a listen. So we have the ability to stomp at the exact right moment and stomp off at the exact right moment. And if we watch the guitar rig work, we can watch this light go off and on. Um, we'll take off right, so. And if we go to the end of the section, and it goes back to a non-phaser version for uh, the verses and the choruses. So that's very easy. Um, let me show you how you would accomplish the same thing in VST Amp Rack. It's exactly the same. So what we'll do is we'll delete this automation and we'll open VST Amp Rack. We uh, want to do no amplifier since we're already using an amplifier uh, down here and we'll do a pre-effect of a phaser. Okay, and now you can click the phaser on just to dial in the tones. And uh, this is a very, very strong phaser in VST Amp Rack. 
Okay, I like the sound of that. We'll uh, we'll automate that. So we'll turn on write automation, and we will hit play, and we'll stomp on the phaser when we want it to come in. So let's do that. And now we take off right and we do show used automation. And we'll see that our phaser moves were there, our stomps work. And if we go and look at VST Amperac, we'll see that it also works. So we'll go back to before this. It's off right here on the light. And when it hits the point, it'll stomp on it without me touching it. Great. Okay, now um, you may say, what about you know uh, affecting parameters? I'll show you how that works as well. So we can add a Wawa just for the sake of this tutorial. And um, let's do a Wawa during that part as well. So we'll turn on write automation as well. And I will hit this and then I'll start messing with this. So let's try that. And I'll turn it off. Okay, so now we can take a look at show used automation. And we have our wah and our wah on and off. Great. And there's our little uh, diagram. And if we want to get into the weeds and really affect the wah moves, oops, you know, we can uh, do that by holding the Alt key. So here it comes on. Now, if we want to get in there, we hold the Alt key and we can draw in whatever we want. Um, now, I like to do it from the instrument just because that's how I'm used to seeing it. That's how you would do it live. But uh, And so you can see it's very easy to automate parameters in Guitar Rig and VST Amp Rack. I cannot say the same for Amplitude 4. And I don't know if my version is messed up, but let me just show you something. We have Amplitude 4 here, and I'll turn off the amp because I don't want the amp, and I'll go to Stomp 1, and I'll add a phaser, and that will be... Oh, and I also hate how you can't <laughs> uh, search for components in here, but I think we need to go to Amplitude Modulation, and we'll do Phaser 10. Why not, huh? Okay, so let's listen to what it sounds like. That's fine because we're just demonstrating the automation. Now, if I hit write automation, and let's uh, delete all the other automations that we've had so far just so that this is very simple. So I want to do write automation. Um, let's give this a shot. So uh, we'll play through and then we'll try to hit this. And now we go to uh, show used automation. And what? Nothing comes up. You know why? Because no automation got written. Um, and so how do you do this in Amplitude? Well, if you read the manual, you say you have to go to automation and say parameter one. Oh, wait, hold on. Cancel. You have to right click on the stomp. And you have to assign bypass to parameter one. Now, if you look, now in your automation, parameter one is ready to go. Now we need to show automation here and go to more and then go to insert and then go to amplitude and then go to parameter one. Great. And now the bypass is on. And so that means that it's off. So if this says on, the phaser's off. 
And if this says off, the phaser's on. And after you've done all this, you still can't automate from the instrument. So let's give that a shot. I'll pull up Amplitude, I'll pull on Write Automation, and we'll try this. And I won't make you listen to the whole thing. We'll go back and look, nothing got written. So how do you do this? Well, you have to come in here and make your own points and turn this on and then turn it off at the end of the segment. But that doesn't work because it's actually opposite day. So if you look, this will turn the phaser off for that segment. So what do you need to do? You need to have this on and then grab this and turn it off. Turn this off, turn this on. And that's how you automate an Amplitube 4. Now I, this is just my personal opinion, but I feel like every single other guitar plugin is more convenient to work with than this. Now we can see I have automated it now. So it's off and it'll turn on at the right section. and it'll turn off at the end of the segment. Okay, so I've shown you how to automate stomp box parameters and even automate uh, wah parameters and uh, the filter sweep uh, in VST Amprac and Guitar Rig 5 and in Amplitude 4. Now, I know that I've uh, criticized IK Multimedia before, and I do like how the Amplitude amp sounds, but it's clunky implementation of software like this that always just drives me crazy with the IK Multimedia products and why I find myself reaching towards Native Instrument and Steinberg products more often. But if you've ever wanted to use stomp boxes within a virtual guitar suite in Cubase, I hope this video has cleared up how you automate those ons and offs with your stomping. And if it has, please feel free to like or subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.